Okay guys, we are talking about different genetics techniques. Now in this video, we will be talking about another genetic technique which is also important. It is called the comparative mapping and uh, the importance of comparative mapping. So let's write it. Comparative mapping. Okay. Now what do we mean by comparative mapping? Okay. Now as the term suggests again comparative means definitely whenever the term comparative comes in uh, the first thing you should know is we are taking or talking about two different things instead of one because we cannot compare single thing right we must have at least two different things so what are these two different things in this case what are these two elements for comparative mapping as we are uh, talking about mapping definitely we'll be talking about genes genome right so this is genome so we are talking about the comparative mapping of of genome okay so what is comparative mapping of genome and what is its importance now comparison can be observed using this kind of mapping now what a genome mapping can give us the idea of genome mapping is that genome mapping can tell us that where are two different types of genome mapping can there one is a linkage mapping another one is physical mapping remember if we look talk about the genome mapping or gene mapping then we can divide into two different segment one is uh, the linkage mapping another one is the physical mapping Now linkage mapping can tell us the relative position of different genes. So it's it's not going to tell us that exactly where a gene is located in a genome. Instead, it can tell us if gene A is present in chromosome number 2, then gene B is also present in chromosome number 2. So it can tell us the relation of different genes. Right? So it can tell us the position of a gene with respect to another gene. It cannot tell the independent position of a gene. But on the other hand, physical mapping can tell us the exact position of a gene. So it can tell us that yes, A is present in chromosome number 2. And, and that's, that's the case. Okay. So this is the difference between linkage and physical mapping. Now we can get the idea of where the genes are located in whole genome using this kind of gene mapping techniques. I've, uh, I've already uh, talked about gene mapping and I've talked about linkage and physical mapping and I've told you that none of this single technique is good to measure or to derive a conclusion. We need to look for all these techniques together, the results of all the techniques together to derive a conclusion. Now in this case what we are talking here, we are talking about comparing the genes for mapping. right? So we can map genes depending upon their position, we can map them. But here we are talking about comparative mapping. That means we have to compare the mapped genome. right? So once we get the map version of the genome. So suppose we are comparing two different genes. One is uh, the gene for mouse. Another one is the gene for say human being. So let us take two genes. So here is a gene for mouse. And mouse suppose this is the X uh, chromosome of the mouse. And here is the gene for human being. And here is also, this is also we are talking about the X chromosome or segment of X chromosome. So you are comparing these two genes. Okay. Now using this comparative mapping, we must first get the exact map of all the genes. Otherwise we cannot do the comparative mapping. We must have the sequence known for this kind of comparative mapping. Right? So we have to know the sequence. So we can only do this for known sequence unknown sequence for unknown sequence we cannot do this thing right so here suppose we get two mouse and human we know both the sequences so we will compare their gene map by comparing the gene map what we can tell is that where the genes we are finding depending upon the markers now what are markers suppose in this mouse gene there are a lot of genes there must be a lot of genes but what we are selecting we are selecting suppose four genes this is gene 1 this is gene 2 this is 3 and 4 so we are talking about these four points in mouse x chromosome and we are also talking about these four points that that are present in human chromosome 
okay say this is a little bit long for example say this one so this is also one two three and four so you're talking about these four specific genes we're taking these genes as a marker for our study so we, instead of taking a whole gene sequence as a marker because it will be difficult for us to get any values because we can only mark the position of genes if they are less in number so you get only four so let's do it so we take only four as a marker so we'll just keep on track of these four genes only not the other genes there must be uh, many more genes there but we take only four now for mouse we get the position of the genes using gene map for the human we also use the gene map and look the position of the gene now what we can com by comparing these two genes what conclusion that we can draw one thing is that we can see this these four genes are present in sequence 1 2 3 and 4 this is the sequence of these genes in mouse and the sequence in, of these four genes in human is also similar also same we can say not same similar 1 2 3 4 so the arrangement is 1 2 3 4 here here is also arrangement is 1 2 3 4 but the difference by looking at this comparison we can tell that this human genome sequence or the human gene sequence that we are looking here the distance between each genes are varying with this mouse right because you can see the distance between 1 and 2 is less for mouse than the distance between 1 and 2 of human or another example say the distance between 2 and 3 is very less in human but the distance is moderate for the mouse right this, though the sequentiality is maintained in mouse and human, but the length, the length in between is varied. So what it is telling us is that though these gene sequences are conserved, the sequence similarity or the sequence arrangement is pretty much conserved from this mouse to human being, but the length in between can vary in this case. So it can tell us important insight about about the common ancestor and whenever we are talking about common ancestor we are talking about evolution right so we are talking about evolutionary relationship between two different organisms so we can use this comparative mapping to understand the evolutionary relationship between two different organisms okay so that is first important features of this comparative genome mapping now suppose uh, if there is any kind of sequentiality change suppose we get 1 2 4 and 3 then we can tell yes there is a sequence swap there is somewhere swapping of the gene segment right if we get only 1 2 3 but not 4 we get another gene 5 in this place then we can tell that fourth gene is misplaced it is substituted with a new gene which is gene 5 so we can derive these conclusions depending upon the comparison now let us talk about this comparison we take this uh, uh, they take this particular concept and apply it to a real time field or a much more important field now suppose there is a so for for plant industry for example we need to we need to plant a particular type of trees or uh, uh, crop trees for example which can give us much more uh, varieties much more yield for example we want much more yield all the time so so this new variety that we get this red color thing is a new variety for example this is new variety okay this is a new variety and this one is an old variety which is existing variety it's a old known variety okay and this one is new variety it is unknown we don't know till now that what it is doing right so what we will do now we will sequence both these genes we don't know what what they are doing and everything so what we will do here we sequence both these genes and we look for so we will take uh, the segment of first thing is take the segment of the chromosome now which chromosome that's the question segment of chromosome here which chromosome right there's a question will take the chromosomes which are carrying the traits trait of our interest so we'll take only those segment of chromosome which get the which is carrying the trait of our interest right 
So in segment uh, for this uh, old known variety, we know that this is a segment of chromosome which is carrying the trait of our interest. And we'll take the same re similar region from this unknown, uh, unknown variety also. But we don't know what is the yield, we don't know what is uh, its uh, uh, resistance property against drought and all these things, resistance property against heat, temper uh, temperature and uh, what is its uh, uh, moisture requirement and all these things. So we need to standardize the thing. Now if we need to standardize this particular plant species in the field, it will take a long time to standardize all these concepts. It will take almost a year or two years or so to finally standardize and provide everything okay. Right? But we cannot wait for two years. It's a long time. Time is running for hours, right? So what we need to do, we need instant results. So we use this kind of cytogenetic techniques. How? So in this case, we get this old known variety. We take this uh, gene for the trait. Suppose this is the gene X. This is the gene. So these are the point of gene. So we take only three genes. This is the gene X. This is Y. Gene, gene Z. So we get three, three uh, new genes that are present in old variety. Now we also compare these genes with this new variety. We have seen also these genes are placed here like that. Okay. Say so this is the fact. Then what we'll do after comparing the map, what we can tell here that the arrangement of this XYZ gene which are responsible for the trait which we require for. For example, the trait we require for is uh, say, uh, what you can say, heat tolerant. Heat tolerance or say moisture requirement okay. and yield. Yield is not actually depend upon one gene but let's say many more genes we uh, look for. We get this are the traits and we get this the, these are the genes which are responsible for getting these traits. Then what we'll get from here is that for the old known variety of the gene we get the arrangement XYZ, XY distantly then uh, YZ is pretty close. And in case of unknown one, we also get x, y a distantly, y, z pretty close. So we get the exact similarity between this old known and new unknown variety. So that eventually can tell us is that, that this new variety of the genome that we get is having very, very similarity with this old known variety. Right? And it is also telling us that means that this new variety, we can take new variety as an example because this old known variety is found to be very good. Very good variety depending upon our need. It fulfills every need of ours. And in this case also we have seen exact type of similarity. So suppose the genome similarity comparing the map, we get say uh, say 98%. Uh, so at what it is telling us, if this the gene sequence is giving us very good, Having the 98% similarity with the old good one for this new, it can also, it must also give us 98%. It must also give us a very good result. Right? It's simply, it's an assumption. It's not, I'm telling you, it's not the perfect file. It's an assumption by simply comparing it with the existing one. Okay? Then we must check it. So by this, in the very first level of introduction, the very first level of uh, research, what we'll take, we'll take many new varieties, we compare it to the known genome, and we look for this genome similarity or matches. If we get this kind of similarities, we take those one, which is having most similarities, and those which are less similarity, we just discard them. So by this, it will take and save some more time for us for uh, researching that which particular variety is going to work for uh, us in the field or not. Okay, so that's the practical application of this comparative genome, uh, comparative mapping or comparative genome mapping. Okay, so here, suppose uh, we get another one, another new variety, and this variety is having the traits uh, or genes for X, genes for Y, but no gene for Z. So it's a X and Y, but no gene for Z. So we can tell that this one is having only two genes, but we want also want the expression of this gene, otherwise. It is uh, otherwise a particular important trait of our interest will be hampered. Okay, but here we don't have any Z. That means this, the, the important trait that is uh, brought about by this gene can be hampered if we use this particular trait. So we won't choose this one, but we will choose this one because it is having all this necessary trait encoding genes. Right? So that's what uh, is all about this comparative genome mapping. And that is the importance of genome mapping. Right?
Now these are the examples. This is uh, the real life application, and also this genome mapping help us for getting the evolutionary relationship. Now what it can tell us is that whether the genes that we are or the markers what we are chosen are carried or are transferred altogether or not. Now here by comparing this mouse and human genome, what we can tell, yes, this one, two, three, four, these four gene markers travel together throughout the long evolutionary history. That's why we get uh, this one, two, three, four sequence for mouse as well as the same sequence for human being. Though the um, uh, the in between a length can be varied, the though the length between the genes can be varied, but they travels together. Now this concept is called synteny. This concept is called synteny. So let me write it. S y n t e n y. Now why? What we mean by synteny? Synteny means suppose we are talking about the markers A and B. It present in chromosome one for an organism one. Now we find it. Uh, if we look for this same type of marker A and B for organism two, we find that same gene A and B present in the organism two in chromosome one. That that is called the synteny. That means the presence of genes all together in similar regions of two different organisms that's called the synteny that means they are having a evolutionary linkage evolutionary relationship that all of their common ancestor is having those two genes in that particular chromosome that's why in future also they those chromosome or those genes tends to travel all together from one generation to another generation and that's what we get the evolutionary tree Okay, so it is also helping us to understand the synteny and the evolutionary relationship, and also using this comparative gene mapping, we can actually improve uh, the plant breeding technology. Okay, so that's uh, are the importance, and I hope uh, this will help you. Thank you.